Welcome to another episode of craziness. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about how to source the materials needed for this particular project. As you can probably already tell, you shouldn't source materials from places like pipes that are connected to other pipes, things like water mains and perhaps car parts, you know, things that are on your car, underneath your car, or even somebody else's car. Um, you should always make sure that the parts you're finding, if they're junk, or if you think they're junk, are not connected to anything else. If they're loose parts, they should be fine. But if they're connected to something, don't take them. I know that sounds really obvious, but sometimes it isn't. And sometimes we can take something and then end up breaking something else. So, just in case. I think that's a disclaimer. That could be a disclaimer, couldn't it? Anyway, what I like to do in my early stages of, of research like this is to go to a store, any store, any DIY, DIY store um, or hardware store, as it's known. So this store is called B&Q. It's in the UK. It's one of the biggest ones in the UK. It's a chain of stores. And it has everything you need in one place. So I'm in the plumbing section, and as you can see, We've got brass and copper fittings everywhere. And all you need to make these work is a little bit of imagination. Because if you're not a plumber and you're thinking perhaps you want to make something like a chandelier, then you have to look at these things with a different perspective. Change your perception to imagine that these things are perhaps barrels or pieces of the part that you're thinking of making. Um, they're all standard sizes, standard fixtures and fittings, so they, they will be available everywhere, all over the world. The thing about store-bought stuff, though, is that it's quite expensive, and you get quite a lot of it, like the bags of these things. There's, there's probably, what, 10, 20 in that bag, and you're only likely to use one sometimes, which is a little bit wasteful. So... This could be a reason why you shouldn't go to a store to buy these things. And look at this pipe, 8mm microbore copper pipe. It's what, what I used to make this chandelier. Um, but there's about 10 metres of it. And that's way too much. You know, that's, that's a lot of waste if I only want to take uh, an inch from this, from the end of that pipe. So, unless I have any other reason or use for this stuff, I probably wouldn't buy it in a store like this. Um, uh, if, if you have any plumbing that you do regularly or if you you know have any other uses for it, it's fine. But the, the, the other place to get this from is online. And I think eBay is fantastic for this. For example, look at this. The copper pipe, we, could, we can get this in a, a metre length which is a really reasonable length for what we want to do with it. This is the 2 meter, uh, two millimeters version, so it's it's quite the tiny diameter pipe. It's the one that I actually used for this um, this chandelier build. So it, it has a little hole in the middle, and it's, uh, it's quite a nice size for this. The key to this, really, is knowing what the keyword search term should be. In this case, microbore pipe. Is, is what gets you these results. Now, without knowing the keywords, you could end up spending a long time on this. These are JST connectors, and that's what I used as plug sockets for the chandeliers. As you can see, you can buy them in bunches of 10. You can buy them in sets of 50. They, they're, they're really cheap. And that's handy if you make a mistake. So this is magnet wire. It's it's basically copper wire that's coated with a special enamel coating um, that prevents you from you know shorting it out. It's abundant and cheap. Uh, LEDs, of course, we all know what they are and we know where to find them. But the trick to finding lots of them in a packet is this thing called PCS. I'm guessing it's abbreviated for uh, abbreviation of pieces. But it's the difference between finding a bulk order and a, a small packet, so PCS. And of course, solder is something that we need when we're making things like this. So uh, a, a roll of solder, it's quite heavy. It's, it's basically lead, isn't it? And it, and it can it can have some uh, a lot of postage on there. But 
it's available nevertheless. Lighters. We're going to need butane lighters for this. And they're available everywhere, but they're also available on eBay. And as you can see, there's any of these will work. But I prefer this type, this type of one, you know. I like the gun, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Um, but this is the one I have. And you can find them everywhere, from chefs use them for creme brulee and, you know... It, it's used for all sorts of things. Soldering flux is another thing that we're going to need. So, again, the prices are, are quite varied. Um, as you can see, they're all very similar. They do the same thing. So it's not really important which brand you get. The nice thing about eBay is that it has a function where you can sort by the cheapest first. And look at this. That's fantastic. It would do the job. It would do what you needed it to do. So, I, I like that with eBay. It's a really nice place to source materials from. Also, what you could find is things like brass feet, which are things that people use for replacement parts on old clocks, or uh, ornaments, or even uh, handbags. It's uh, it, As long as they're brass or copper, then you should be able to solder them and change them into something else. Uh, antiques, of course, and bits and bobs that people sell, like brass uh, brass fixtures and fittings and parts. You, you don't need to know what they are for, really, just that they are roughly the same size, the right size, and uh, you know you can you can use your imagination, like this thing that that could be used for uh, the bottom of a chandelier. It's a uh, it, it's a really good resource of of parts and materials. Uh, sometimes but of course there's nothing like getting these things for free in piles of junk lying around um, which is which is why you know you you have to consider the cost sometimes if you're making something and you want to sell it then yes you can make maximize your profits by buying from from uh, a cheap source or even getting it for free but are you going to be able to replicate that if you buy if you find it in a junk pile or buy it uh, cheap? For example, look at that. We can buy twenty or thirty of these, and we can repurpose them. Um, the The great thing about store bought stuff is that it's usually standard and and easily available, and will be continuously available. You know, it's not going to it's not going to be hard to find. So if you if you do want to sell some of these things, that those are some things to consider. The um, other things can be cheaper in store than they are on the internet. For example, solder. Sometimes that that can be quite heavy, so there's a cost of postage with that, and and you know the, it swings and roundabouts. That's what they say, isn't it? But anyway, the um, there there are many ways to find these items. And I know that loads of people probably already know this and, you know, they, they don't want to watch a video explaining how to find something because everyone is good at finding things. So that's where we're up to. And hopefully we've got some idea now of, of what to do and where to get things from. And if that's the case and you're happy and you're confident then let's get started hit that like button smash that bell and we'll get straight on to making this thing now